we can start now and the, I will do the chapter 10, the neural network. And maybe I abandoned the iPad today. And I will share the screen. And chapter 10 slides are available in Canvas, so you can download it. Especially today, connection may not be the best, so you can download from Canvas, then you can see. So just make sure that, do you hear me? Can you hear me? Yep. Yes, we can. Okay, great. Okay, so today's topic is probably uh, really interesting. And the, I focus on the ideas of neural network. How many of you heard of neural network before? No, at least in the news. Um, yeah. I mean, yeah. I've heard of it. I don't know any details, but I've sure. heard those words. I see. Uh, sorry. So, okay, so I hope you are seeing my slides. Um, Can you see my slides? Yes. Okay, great. So we will start. So chapter 10, the deep learning. So at first, the uh, overview. So the neural networks became popular in 1980s. So it's a lot of, um, so uh, many, many years ago. And its mathematical structure somewhat mimics the human's brain, but their resemblance is often overstated or exaggerated. So the neural network, basically we think about nodes and the, how the, um, strongly the each nodes are connected. So that is the, um, you know, the concept of the model. So it's similar to the human's neural network and probably the, if someone says um, the, this model mimics the human's brain, then probably they got more funding in 1980s. So probably that that's the reason that it's called neural network and somewhat similar, but still that this is a statistical model so um not that uh, close to close to the, uh, the human's brain um and it became less popular in 90s and 2000s uh, um and this is the reason that the uh, this textbook hasn't had neural network until last year so the neural network the r has been developed in mostly from maybe 1998 to like 2010. So the, it's the era that the neural network uh, wasn't popular. And after 2000, uh, yeah. And the, the reason is that the, it needs a lot of calibrations of hyperparameters. So theoretically the, it works fantastic, but the, uh, um, actually the, uh, in reality, you have to optimize parameters. Otherwise it's almost a junk. So that's why it has not been used for a long time. Also computational issues, the, it has many parameters. So the computationally uh, more intensive. But after 2010, the, it was the renamed as deep learning. Probably you have heard of deep learning in the news. Uh, did you? Uh, I think that it, um, probably. And the, this became popular again. So the neural network have so-called, yeah, so that is the history. And the neural network have so-called hidden layers. So deep learning, the name of the deep learning implies that there are more hidden layers. So yeah, I will discuss it later. And there are several reasons for deep learning. So um, sorry, I say, there are several reasons that the deep learning became popular again. So the one, first thing is it requires less calibrations than before and the model is developed better. And its performance is superior to the other statistical models, especially for large data sets in the area of image and the video processing and the natural language processing. And the, this textbook in section 10.6 that they discuss, the, the, the textbook discusses that when neural network or deep learning is useful. 
And the textbook says the when data is large, but the, uh, my impression is slightly different. So neural network is very useful that when something is clear for us human, but the, it's difficult to describe as a mathematical formula. For example, the think about the situation that the um, maybe the a child the riding on a bicycle the suddenly you know run across the street when you are driving a car then you have to brake and that is clear but it's you know logically or mathematically it's not 100% clear why we have to brake maybe there is a picture of a child maybe on the uh, billboard or something and also that there are miscellaneous you know objects that are along the street maybe the, uh, some um, bicycles are available and the, maybe some people are on the bicycle but maybe they are just using smartphone and not riding bicycles and if there are so many objects that why the, we can find that the, we have to break when children run you know across the uh, street with a bicycle so in such a case, probably the neural network is very useful. But it's if it's very, uh, you know, organized situation, like we already have the variable X and variable Y, we only have two variables, and we see the pattern of Y and X, then, okay, so it's slightly different from a straight line, then we apply neural network. Result can be marginally better, but probably not, not fantastic. So the, the, my answer um, on the when the neural network is useful is the it's useful when the, it's clear for us, but the mathematical algorithm is not clear. Yeah, and the, this, uh, this section, uh, this chapter have the three components. So modeling of neural network and the algorithm to fit neural network and the R implementation of neural networks. But we only have one lecture today. So I focus on this modeling of neural networks. That is section 10.1 to 10.6. And algorithm is, algorithm is more complicated than other uh, methods. So um, that we skip this and you can read it. And our, our implementation that we have the several packages and it sounds this is a new chapter this year so it uses the very new package the Keras the, I haven't really used it and the, it has a lot of functionalities for uh, complicated neural networks and also it uses TensorFlow and the uh, traditionally I mean the, uh, in older days in old days not old days, maybe a few years ago, there are more um, popular packages such as NNet or NeuralNet or um, H2O packages. So those are probably easier to uh, use. So especially probably the NeuralNet package is the um, easiest to use. I mean, maybe, maybe NNet is even easier, but the, the functionality is very limited. So if you are using the in a project, maybe you can uh, search for how to use neural net or internet. And uh, yeah, do you have any comments or questions so far? Okay, so a neural network is a supervised learning. So it's similar to tree-based methods or regression uh, analysis. So it can be used for both continuous response and categorical response. The category Categorical response, they can have more than two classes. So support vector machines, for example, that is limited to binary classification and multi, um, multiple class classifications, that it's very hard. It's not impossible, but it's pretty hard. But the neural network, they almost uh, automatically, they, uh, it can deal with the categorical response with more than two classes. And what's neural network? The in short, the structure of neural network is basically, yeah, so the, sorry, that this two is redundant, multiple layers of logistic regression. So we have X and Y, but the, uh, we have the intermediate layer. So that is the neural network. So the last layer may not have a link function if the response is continuous. So remember that if X is continuous, y is binary then we need a link function and that link function makes the regression logistic regression the neural network the, it really depends on the last layer so intermediate layers the um, all functions are 
you know, basically a logistic function. But the last layer, if the response is continuous, that is just the usual. Um, it looks like a usual linear regression. But if the response is categorical, then we have somewhat similar to logistic regression. OK, so this is the um, just the uh, most fundamental graph for neural network. And this is predictor variables, x1, x2, x3, x4, just as usual. And y is response variable. So it's a kind of you know the situation for multiple linear regression. We have one response and the four predictors. And neural network has hidden layers, and we have several nodes. In this case, five nodes, sometimes more, sometimes less. So A1, A2, A3, A4, A5, and the a1 is some link function g of linear combination of x1 to x4. So basically, it's uh, similar to logistic regression. So we can see that the um, a sub k is the h sub k of x, and that is the g of the constant plus the summation of this. So this is entirely the linear function of x1 to x4, xp in general, so this, this part. So the linear function, and then we have link function g, so like logistic function. g is a fixed function. So um, so the a1 and a5 are function of these four variables. So basically, we extract different features of x1 to x4. If we have very limited number of hidden layers, maybe it's similar to principal component analysis. For example, we summarize four variables into two variables, then A1 and A2 are two hidden, two, you know, um, hidden variables. Then after that, that, we again explain why by A1 to A5. So we can see that the f of x is equal to constant plus summation of the beta k a k. So this is again the linear function of um, a1 to a k. So yeah, and we have some error term. So I would say that y is equal to f of x plus epsilon. So y is equal to beta naught plus summation beta k a k plus epsilon. So this part is same as the linear model. If the response y is categorical, then Again, we need some uh, um, link function g. Yeah, so uh, yeah, so. And the neural network have many parameters. So we think about how many parameters are there. And maybe before that, maybe I explain a little bit more about that. Okay. So A sub K is called an activation or a node. So, um, so in the hidden layers that we have the um, maybe five nodes there in the previous figure. And the K is a given constant. So the number of um, nodes so that is a given constant. So we have to optimize it. So that is the hard part for neural network. Sometimes k is too large, then it does not work well. And k is too small, the model is too simple. And k is a hyperparameter, so it can be optimized by cross-validation. So g is called a given function, called an activation function. So it is equivalent to the link function in logistic regression. So neural network is more, um, developed by the computer scientists. So their terminologies are different from you know, statisticians. So we don't say um, activation function. The statisticians say logistic function. And node, um, statisticians usually say hidden variables or uh, latent variables. But the, here, the activation or node. And parameters, we have many parameters, the Ws and the betas. These are estimated numerically by maximum likelihood. Um, the algorithm is discussed in 10.7. So basically, that we minimize this, the sum of squared errors. Or in, in case of classification, that we minimize the likelihood function, log, uh, we minimize negative log likelihood function. 
And the one thing the textbook doesn't mention is that the hidden nodes are interchangeable. So, you know, the observed variables are not interchangeable, right? So for example, we have the two response, Y1 and Y2. We, we didn't deal with that model this uh, in this class, but the, if we have two variables, those are different, right? So if we fit Y1 on X1 to X4, we fit F Y2 on X1 to X4, we have different coefficients and these have different meaning. But here, A1 to A5 are just intermediate products and it's not distinguished each other. So that means the um, estimated parameters are not unique. So suppose the, um, we fit this, the entire graph, entire neural network, and we get, suppose the A1 is G, time, G of maybe one plus two times X1 plus three times X2. And the A2 is the G of three plus, um, you know, one times X1 plus two times X2. Then those questions are different, but if we just, you know, interchange A1 and A2. Basically, it's the same, right? So maybe Y is, for example, five times A1 plus six times A2. And if we change the coefficient, interchange the coefficient, that becomes six times A1 plus five times A2. But in total, you know, the response, the F of X is identical. So that means the parameters are essentially not identified in neural network. So just we think about increasing likelihood in the procedure, then we stop somewhere. So that is always local maxima. And the, there are multiple the local maxima which have the same value. So basically, you know, we um, have some original parameter space, but if we think about usual parameter space, that is, you know, um, that includes the multiple copies of that parameter space. So the multiple optimal points. So just the, uh, maybe in simplest case that we have, you know, X1 and X2, and then we have coefficient beta one and beta two. And the beta one and beta two, um, you know, if the, we think about the plane of beta one and beta two, then yeah, so the these are way around. So beta two and beta one. So this is the um, also uh, 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 the optimal parameter. So if we think about just the uh, maybe think about just a square. So one by one square on the plane of beta one and beta two. So beta one is between zero and one, beta two is between zero and one, but the, that square is redundant parameter space. If we think about the diagonal line, the below diagonal line, maybe we have beta one, beta two, and above diagonal line, the, if we the, reflect that point with respect to y is equal to x, I mean, beta one is equal to beta two, then we have another optimal point. So the neural network work works work that way. So parameters are not identically, um, parameters are not uniquely identified. Yeah. How many parameters here? We exclude hyperparameters. So how many betas and Ws? How many arrows? Um, we have a lot of parameters. That is what we want to say. And you can see that the, you know, the A1, A1 is, A1 is the, you know, the W0 uh, plus something. So the A1 is equal to W0 plus W1 times X1 plus W2 times X2. Maybe I would say that the W11 just in case and W12 and so on. And up to W14 of X4. So we have the five parameters. You can see the five arrows, X1 to A1, X2 to A1, X3 to A1. And we it's not written, but we have intercept. So we have five parameters. And it's the same for A2, A3, A4, A5. So that means the five, five times five. So we have the 25 parameters between X and A. 
and a to f, I mean, a to y, I would say, a to y, f of x is a linear combination of a1 to a5, the plus intercept. So that means that we have six parameters. So in total, we have 25 plus six. So that means the 31 parameters. Right. So you can see the from the previous page that the we have you know the uh, five parameters each for you know each of the a sub k. Then we have one plus five, so we have the six parameters here. So five times five plus six, so we have thirty six parameters. So neural network. This neural network is pretty small neural network. Usually neural network is applied for the situation with many variables, hundreds of variables. And then we have multiple layers sometimes. So it increases the parameters, number of parameters dramatically. So the, we have much more parameters usually, so hundreds of parameters. So um, that is what I wanted to say. And in principle, it's the maximum likelihood estimation, but the, um, uh, the algorithm is pretty different, but the, um, that is the case. And G is a fixed function, and often it's logistic function. And arc tangent function has similar shape, and we can use arc tangent. And also that this the ReLU, the rectified linear unit function is used. So ReLU is this function. So G of Z is zero if Z is less than zero, and G of Z is Z otherwise. So that is you know that this black line. So sigmoid function, um, it's similar. Uh, you, we have already studied in logistic regression. And the ReLU idea is a kind of similar to tree regression. So basically, we separate the cases. So less than 0 and more than 0. So we think about the sum coefficient. Um, suppose we have a of x, then we put this, maybe I would say that maybe a of x plus something, maybe maybe to be concrete, maybe suppose the two x plus four, we put um, two, of, two x plus four in G. Then that is the G times G of two times x plus two, right? So that means that we separate the case when x is equal to, x is less than negative two and x is more than negative two. So basically we separate the case and if less than negative two, that this becomes zero and more than negative two, that we keep this function. So basically we separate the case and we split the case at X is equal to negative two. So it's a kind of similar to three idea. So, or we can say that the, for, we are estimating very complicated surface and but the, basically we split the case linearly at many places. So both are pretty uh, straightforward. And uh, sigmoid function, maybe less straightforward even, but the, at least this is highly nonlinear function, right? And that we are uh, taking summation of this. So G of, you know, the sum function of X1 to X4 and plus G of uh, some another function of X1 to X4. So if we add several things, then, um, also, we put some coefficient, maybe w0, w1, w2, and so on. Then certainly we know that it can express the complicated function. Yeah. So this is the idea of the neural network. And why we use nonlinear G? Uh, because if G is the identity map, the entire algorithm in the network is uh, is linear, right? So linear function of linear function is again linear. So even if we have many hidden layers, we have many multiple nodes. Anyway, that is the same as linear regression. So the idea is to put a complicated G. Then we think about the multiple layers of G or summation of G of something. Then it can express, it can represent the more complicated pattern between X and Y. 
So a nonlinear G makes it possible to represent more complex structure. And with multiple hidden layers, we can represent the complex structure more efficiently, while theoretically, one hidden layer with a large K is sufficient to express almost all nonlinear patterns. Yeah. So, so yeah, so usually we summarize the data um, in several different ways, then um, you make a decision, right? So the neural network go that way. So suppose the, okay, so suppose you're female and uh, uh, looking for a nice boyfriend and the, maybe one is the, his income or ability to earn <laughs> and another is the, his physical you know, abilities and the, the third one is the, his emotional maturity or something like that. And the, each one you evaluate with the different criterion. Then after that, maybe you take linear combination of that <laughs> to evaluate that um, person as a boyfriend. So um, that hidden layers. So we have hidden layers, several the hidden nodes. So each node have some meaning and after that we combine. And if we have multiple layers, that is suddenly useful. So su suppose the, you know, the, the, to evaluate someone's physical abilities and someone's, you know, the ability to earn is different. So to ability to earn, maybe, you know, their academic, you know, ability or their uh, communication skills or uh, someone else. And the, those are different factors. So at first, may, maybe you want to summarize the, um, his, the all academic abilities from the, you know, math text score and the English test score and the, uh, I don't know, the some, uh, maybe which school that he graduated from and so on. So that is one variable, one set of variables. So at first test score, maybe one score, one, one math score also the, um, comes from multiple exams or something like that. So the, we summarize the data little by little, then after that, the finally, the, we combine all data to decide. So if we have multiple layers, then probably that's more convenient. If all irrelevant data are just uh, um, aligned um, in one space, then um, it's not really uh, hard it's really hard to pick up um, the best uh, linear combination. And here is an example of G representing a nonlinear function. And to see the power of nonlinear G, to consider the G of Z is equal to Z square. Uh, this is just a toy example. So uh, just for simplicity, we set G of Z is equal to Z square and uh, we'll, we will see what will happen. And we set these parameters, the W sub one zero is zero, W one one is one, W one 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 two is one. So first component is the zero plus X one plus X two. And if we the calculate the G of this, that is the square of this. So that is H one X. And this is the um, node A one. And the second one is the node A two. A2 use the different coefficients, so 0, 1, negative 1, so this. Then, and the another layer, so what's the uh, prediction for y? That is f of x, and f of x is defined by 0 plus 1 quarter times this h1 of x plus and minus negative 1 quarter of h2 of x. Um, then the, that becomes actually the sometimes cancels and it becomes x1, x2. So you can see with the gz of equal, g of z is equal to z square, at least that we can include the interaction term between x1 and x2. Yeah. And you can easily see that probably x1 square or x2 square are also included. And if G is very complicated function and we have multiple layers of G, then we can express very complicated functions. Uh, do you have any questions? Yeah, I have already introduced the um, fundamental ideas. So if you have trouble, you can ask. And the, otherwise I will go on to a more complicated structures. 
And yeah, um, at first we discussed this kind of general neural network. And after that, we discussed the more specific neural networks. And here's another example of neural network. And the, we have two hidden layers, sometimes more than two hidden layers. So we summarize the information a little by little. And as the figure suggests, that usually it's useful to have more nodes in the first layer and the, a fewer nodes for the second layer and so on. So if we have, for example, three hidden layers and we have uh, maybe 100 variables, maybe the first layer that we use maybe 30 nodes and the second, maybe 20 nodes and the third, maybe 10 nodes or something like that. That works usually good. Sometimes that we make it smaller than make it larger again. That uh, makes um, the algorithm efficient sometimes. Um, yeah, output layer here. Uh, yeah, okay, so this is the network. And this network is different from the previous one um, in Y also. And actually this Y is categorical. And yeah, and this Y is actually, oh, sorry, that this data is for recognition of handwritten, handwritten digits. So we have zero to nine. So we have 10 categories. So basically that we want the probability for that observation is zero or that observation is being being one or that observation being nine. So we have the 10 categories. So the output should be the probabilities for the each of those 10 digits, zero to nine. So the final layers have basically the 10, um, you know, final nodes, terminal nodes. And those should be probabilities. Yeah, so, yeah, so probably they, we don't really need it, but the, at first, the relationship between the first hidden layers and the predictors. So we have the hidden nodes is equal to G of linear combination of X1 to XT. And the second one, uh, basically that we, we relate the first hidden layers and the second hidden layers. So in the second hidden layers, the node is equal to G of linear combinations of the first layer plus intercept. So we have many, many um, parameters here. Suppose we have, again, P is equal to five, for example, and the um, first hidden layers, K1 is equal to four as seen previously or previously, Sorry, previously P was four, right? P was four, but maybe, but this time maybe it makes larger, P is 10, okay? So K1 is five and K2 is three. And the final nodes, we have nine. The, so final one, so it's a little bit complicated. So maybe we leave it for now. And how many parameters in the first one? W1 and W2. So W1 is, you know, a set of parameters. So W1, how many parameters? Anyone? If P is 10, K1 is five. Intercept is additional. How many parameters in this relationship, W1? We have five nodes. So we have five equations, okay, so five times and the G of linear combination of X1 to X10, right? So one plus intercept plus 10 variables, so 55. And the second layer between this and this, superscript one and superscript two, we have three nodes. Here we, we see five, but the three nodes and five, you know, lower level nodes. So that means the three equations for each equation, we have intercept plus five variables. We have 18 parameters. So we have 18. And the last one, um, actually 
categorical one, um, actually the one node is redundant usually. We can see that if we have 10 probabilities, nine probabilities give the rest, right? So that means the, um, we have essentially nine equations. So in B, we have nine equations and we have three hidden nodes plus intercept, so one plus three. So I think that this has 36 parameters. So in total that we have 73, so 109 parameters. So we have that many um, parameters here. Oh, I think I got some chat. Five. Oh, sorry, the 55, polar 55, 80. Yeah, you're right. So maybe you got two points. Okay. <laughs> so, okay. So that's it, and uh, yeah, and the yeah network. So the typical neural network question is here. So we have the handwritten digits. So this is twenty-eight by twenty-eight pixels. So in total, the seven hundred eighty-four pixels, and usually this is represented by grayscale. So each pixel has maybe the thickness from maybe 0 to 255, maybe 0 to 15 sometimes. So the each pixel have some number. So that means the uh, P is 784, 784 predictors. Yeah, and the Y is categorical from 0 to 9. So we have the 10 uh, classes. So, so this is a typical um, neural network question. And how to deal with categorical Y with multiple categories? So it has 10 classes for this case. So we have output F0 of X to F9 of X. But the, at first that we consider that this ZM, um, sorry, the ZM, uh, sorry, the ZM is a linear function of previous nodes. So the ZM, so ZM is equal to uh, what the beta, we use the beta zero plus the beta maybe zero, maybe M zero plus the beta M one A superscript to sub one plus up to something. So A sub K one K2, BM, K2, okay. So ZM is a linear combination. And after taking a linear combination, that we put it on the exponential, so put on the E, because the, it should be positive number because it's probability. Then after that, that, we take the ratio. So the summation of L is equal to zero to nine, E to the power ZL, and the numerator is E to the power ZM then we can get a, a kind of probability. So some number between zero and one. So in this way that we can calculate the F zero, F sub zero of X to F sub nine of X. And this, the final activation function is called softmax activation. So, you know, we have probabilities, not zero one. So that is, you know, not, hard, it's soft. Yeah, and the here, the how to, you know, optimize it and the regression problem, we minimize some of squared errors, but the here that we minimize the negative log likelihood function. So you can see this is the negative log likelihood function. So F of M is probability and Y of I M is, um, one if the ice observation is in class M. So if the M class M probability is 0 0.9, and actually that is the um, class M, then likelihood is 0 0.9. If the likelihood is 0 0.9, but the, it's not true, uh, for, for example, sorry, sorry, maybe I would say that the um, maybe F 
just for simplicity, we only have F0, F1, and F2. And the F0 is 0 0.3, F1 is 0 0.5, and F2 is 0 0.2. And actual observation is one, then F1 is correct. So likelihood is 0 0.5. And if zero is, um, the correct answer is zero, then likelihood for that observation is 0 0.3. And if the truth is two, then likelihood is 0 0.2. So basically we multiply those numbers for all observations. And if we take logarithm, that becomes this. So originally product of Fm superscript, uh, Fm to the power y or y sub im. So y sub im is indicator a function. So if m's observation is in class i, if yim is equal to one, and otherwise zero. So y i m is equal to one if the um, i observation is in class m and zero otherwise. Okay. Yeah, so this is the way how to fit the multi-category um, response. And the dropout, so sometimes the, we modify neural network to make it better. And one is dropout regularization. So dropout regularization can be used in a large neural network to have a better test performance. So this algorithm prohibits to use a certain percentage of nodes randomly in each iteration of the neural network. So for example, we drop 10% 10, 10 of the nodes. So we cannot use those 10% of nodes in the optimization procedure. So it sounds strange, but the, in this way, a neural network is strong in some sense. So it doesn't rely on a specific um, node. So the idea is somewhat similar to random forest in which only a few predictors can be used in each step. Uh, not, not very similar, but the textbook claims that's similar. And optimization algorithm is also totally different. Optimization algorithm, of neural network is online algorithm. So it proceeds one of, it processes the one observation at a time. So linear regression, we put all observations, then we calculate the sum of squared errors, then the, we adjust parameter or something like that. But the neural network is totally different. So you take one observation at a time and think about the, that observation's contribution to the um, uh, parameters. That is the way to go. So the image is that suppose we only have y and x, only y and x, and the um, starting model is y is equal to 2x. Then our observation, next observation, maybe uh, we have the y n, y n and x n, and the y n and x n is equal to, for example, that this is the um, 4.5 and the 2. Then two times x is four, but the 4.5 is larger. So that means probably this coefficient is larger. So we have to adjust this coefficient to, for example, 2.1 or something. Then we repeat that procedure. So that is the basic um, um, online algorithm. So neural network is online algorithm. So it's totally different from the other regression models. So I think it doesn't, uh, too similar to random forests, but the, we drop some predictors that they not, not actually we don't really drop predictors, but we drop nodes. So somewhat similar to random forests. Yeah, so that is the um, uh, foundation uh, fundamentals of neural network. And the others, the chapter uh, section. 10.3 and 10.5 cover a specific type of neural network. So chapter 10.3, convolutional net neural networks, and 10.5, recurrent neural network, CNN and RNN. So CNN is for image and video processing, and the RNN is the sequential the, um, data, such as 
you know, sentences or the time series, such as, you know, financial time series, uh, atmospheric time for series, and so on. And we discuss convolutional network, probably because the, uh, this has the widest applications. And this is primarily for image and the video data. So it has the convolution layers and the pooling layers. The convolution layers extract specific feature of the data. For example, if we recognize some um, pictures of animals, maybe one layer that identify the two eyes or another layer identify their ears or another layer identify nose or something like that. Then the pooling um, layer, pooling layer, the compress the information. So if we have too much information, probably it's harder to decide. So the, we have the one hidden layer specific to, you know, summarize the information. Then again, then we expand the data to extract many different features and so on. So the convolutional network is the multiple layers of convolutional layers and the pooling layers. So pooling layers, the each layer is pretty uh, straightforward. Um, convolutional layers just pick up specific pattern in some way. And the pooling layers just compress the information. So for example, two by two pixels into one pixel. So if we have values, the, for example, that for two by two you know, image has the value of the zero, one, one, five, then we take maximum. Uh, that kind of the simple procedure we take that to compress the information. And the uh, convolutional network assumed some correlation between neighboring nodes. So the, we don't assume that every node is uh, independent. So the one node is very uh, closely related to neighboring nodes. So idea of convolutional network to recognize this is a tiger um, that it extracts some features. I don't know, this is the some, the shape of the um, tiger's face. And I'm not totally sure about this, but uh, we have some other features. Um, this is, I don't know where this comes from, maybe here, the ear, the shape of ear, and the shape of eyes, and the shape of tongue, and then maybe shape of mouse, no, uh, yeah, the mouse, um, and so on. Then after that, we connect several things. Um, so eyes, eyes are like this and noses are like this. Actually noses come from this and this. I think that this, this represents holes in the nose or something. And, and we connect several things to identify what is ear and, oh, actually the ear. Okay, so this is the eyelid, eyelid. And eyelids and the, the eye, then in total, we can construct this ear, uh, this eye. And then the, we combine these things to decide this is a tiger. Yeah, actually the, we decide the um, pictures in that way. So suppose that these tigers have ears which, uh, which are similar to the human's ear, then probably this picture looks very strange and uh, you are not sure that this tiger or human or something else. So some combination is important to decide um, this is a tiger. Yeah, so the convolutional layer that we identify some characteristics, then we compress the information in the pooling layer. Then we expand this again and the, um, you know, compress again and we repeat. And the, we make it smaller and smaller. Um, so, yeah. So, yeah. So basically this 16 by 16. Okay, so original image is 30 by 32. So 16 by 16 means that it's compressed. So 
like the resolution is the half of this. So there's just two by two dots that uh, corresponds to one dot in this picture. Or something like that. And then the finally that we um, have many, many um, convolutional layers, we have many features, then those feature is flattened. So that means the, so in the first several steps that we think about the spatial relationship. So one, um, uh, one pixel, the value of the one pixel is similar to neighboring pixel. So actually we don't have much uh, degrees, degrees of freedom here, but the finally the, since the, um, this each of these image gets really small so we finally allow any relationship between pixels yeah so in, at this stage this pixel is related to the neighboring state pixel but the, once we get uh, really the large number of features with uh, this small uh, matrix then the, we regard the each pixel just independently we um, relax the condition of spatial correlation. That is flat, flattening. Yeah, the, to be uh, more precise, the convolutional layers um, uh, works in this way. So each small picture of the um, data, so this is basically the three, a uh, four by three um, image, four by three image, then the convolutional filter is um, identifies identifies the characteristics of the small part of this entire image. So we focus on two by two in this case, and based on this two by two image, that we um, um, calculate some value based on the convolutional filter. Um, for example, if we wanna see the diagonal line, we want to see diagonal line from this two by two picture, um, maybe diagonal line to the um, upper left to lower right, then value for A and value for E, I mean thickness for A and the thickness for E should be higher than B and D. So in such a case, for example, filter such as one, alpha is one, beta is negative one, gamma is negative one, and the delta is one. Uh, that filter helps to identify the diagonal pattern. So um, the, based on that, that we calculate the value and the, that repeats for each you know, small um, patch of the image. So D, E, G, H or G, H, J, K or B, C, E, F or E, F, H, I or H, I, K, L. So we have the six, the smaller, you know, partial um, image. And for each image, we characterize the some special feature, for example, whether or not we have the um, diagonal pattern from upper left to lower left right. And these are summarized in this way. Basically, the, this kind of filter that we use the, to um, make the convolutional um, layers. And there are two, methods to make the um, this convolutional filter. And the one is the pre-specific weights, uh, is redundant. So yeah, for example, diagonal line or stripes, then we can just the hand pick parameters, the one negative, one negative, one, one, or maybe zero, zero, one, one, or one, zero, one, zero, then we can detect specific pattern. And another is to make neural network learn the weights. So just the, um, we don't have any, you know, presumption and that we make um, neural network um, find the, some useful patterns. Neural network is anyway, you know, supervised learning. So the, that means that we have, for example, 100 pictures and we have answers for that picture. This is a tiger, this is lion and so on. And tigers have more stripes than lions. So the detect the uh, stripe pattern, then it's more likely to be a tiger. So um, we can hand pick those uh, parameters, but the, um, also the based on the data that we can train it. 
Yeah, so this is one example. So the, this filter tries to find the you know vertical stripes or the horizontal um, stripes. Then after the filter, the data becomes this and this. And you can see that these three pictures are really similar, but this picture, the um, upper right, emphasize the more vertical pattern. You can see the vertical pattern here, vertical stripes here, and it's the kind of the uh, exaggerated pattern. But the horizontal um, horizontal stripes, the, it becomes less significant here. And this is the other way around. So the more vertical patterns are emphasized and the, sorry, more horizontal patterns are emphasized and vertical patterns we cannot really see. So in this way that we can more, you know, specifically um, identify the characteristics of the data. Yeah. So this is the way to the, um, recognize the pictures by neural network. So neural network have many nodes, but we have some restrictions in this convolutional network. Instead, we have many layers. So it's specialized for image processing and video processing. And also that we do data augmentation. So each image could be copied and distorted by zoom, um, horizontal and vertical shift and shear and small rotation, rotations and horizontal flips to increase the sample size. So if you just flip, um, you know, picture horizontally, the tiger should be tiger, right? So if the one picture is tiger, but it flipped, then the decision is lion, probably that algorithm isn't appropriate, right? So we need some, um, some kind of invariance, right? So the, to guarantee that, that it's useful to include this. And I heard from one PhD student that for autonomous driving, that also we add several things. For example, the, from the picture of the you know, road, we just randomly add something randomly add a dog or randomly add a, uh, I don't know, the billboard or randomly add just a parked car or something like that, then um, the, it can improve the algorithm. Data augmentation is also seen as a regularization, the similar to rich regression as it penalizes asymmetry of the model. Um, So if the, we make some parameters represents asymmetry, large parameter is penalized. So in that way, the data augmentation is somewhat similar to rich regression textbook claims. Yeah, so it makes sense. So this is original picture. So we have some tilted tiger or the maybe enlarged tiger and this is flipped uh, tiger and this is distorted tiger or something like that. So everything should be um, a tiger. So that makes you know data size larger and test performance better. And this is another one. So this is the famous data set of ResNet 50. I think I don't know, uh, maybe 10,000 pictures, and each picture have label because this is supervised learning. And you can see um, what is this? This is is a kite or a gray a great gray owl or a robin. Uh, I don't know what is the truth, but the, um, probably is this the gray robin or not robin, right? Robin is this, uh, maybe, I don't know. This is great gray owl or something. So actually this isn't really um, specified correctly. And this is the, it looks, this is Lhasa so not Tibetan Terrier. But the, this picture is diagnosed as the um, Tibetan Terrier with 56% probability, Lhasa Apso with 32%, and Coca Spaniel with 
Yeah, and sometimes we have some misleading um, thing. For example, this picture. This picture is actually the same as this one. I don't know, this is great gray wall or something, but the, actually the, with 12% probability, this is recognized as nail because this shape is similar to nail. And this also, the, it looks like a hook maybe and fountain. So this entire, I don't know what is this, but this looks like a fountain. So usually when we see the picture, this is just this all. And, but the, uh, actually the neural network recognized this is the main part of the picture. So this is the fountain. Yeah. Maybe you can say this is a picture of green leaves, but the, probably that isn't really appropriate answer for a human. So it makes some sense, you know, this is obviously the cat, but the, it's recognized that as old English sheepdog, but the, still it makes some sense. It's better than uh, just random. Especially this is the dog and also it almost specifies the, um, which dog this is. Yeah, I, I, I see, yeah, the, uh, the uh, Cocker Spaniels, they have the, you know, shorter, the legs. Um, so maybe the, this shape, this slope, the, um, is common for Cocker Spaniels. So that's why that this makes uh, this gave three percent probability for Cocker Spaniel. It does not look like the Tibetan area, but uh, anyway. Yeah, do you have any questions? And the last one is the recurrent neural network or RNN. This is a type of neural network specialized for sequential data, such as the sentences and the time series. And for now, um, yeah, okay. So this is a neural network. Okay, we have X1 to XL, so variables. But the here, sequential data. So X1 to XL are just the L words in one sentence or L consecutive observations in financial time series. So then we get we will get some con uh, conclusion. For example, uh, from time financial time series that we want to get the recession probability or from um, sentence, from a sentence that we want to get some conclusion with a, a this sentence is positive set, uh, meaning or a negative meaning or something like that. So the first one, second one. So there are several things to uh, care. So at first, um, one node is affected by the new input, but also the previous node. So basically the, we interpret X1 and we got some A1. So the X1 to XL is some review movie review sentence. Then X1 is, you know, like the, if it starts with excellent, then probably this is a very positive review. So the A1, it reflects that information. Then A2, A2 is affected by A1 still. Okay, so it's basically positive, but the X2, and uh, maybe the next word is but, then but, or oh, maybe it's not good. So probably that we the adjust our you know decision, the neural networks decision, and probably O1 is very positive, but the O2 isn't very positive, and A3 based on that, then um, we have something, uh, excellent, but it it probably means nothing. So probably no not much information has been changed. O2 is similar. To O3 is similar to O2. And the relationship between A1 and A2 and relationship between A2 and A3, they should be identical. So this is the assumption of RNN. So even if the sentence is very long, um, the, this isn't really a large network because the, this U is just one um, kind of matrix. So node A1 to A2, node A2 to A3, A3 so the relationships are the same. Also, the relationship between this X1 and the A1 
uh, is the same as X2 and A2 and X3 and A3. So just uh, we summarize this information X2 into this node. So, so each each of these A1, A2, A3 can be multiple nodes, but the anyway the relationship is stable. So it's just the same. So we have W, U, B. This is these are a set of parameters, but the, these are the same for all um, you know these the vertical groups. Sometimes it's written as this. AL is a kind of autoregressive, and the X affects A, A affects O. And usually this Y is considered as output. It's theoretically possible to take X03 or I don't know, um, summation of O1 to OL or something, but the, um, usually OL is regarded as response to explain why. Um, yeah, maybe the, we have, um, yeah, so yeah. So in RNN, the parameters are time invariant. So the, um, this vertical, the set of parameters are the same. The final output OL is usually re related to the response while we have the output O sub L for each L as byproducts. O capital L is interpreted as the final conclusion of the sentence for natural language pr processing or O sub L is interpreted as the prediction for next time point for time series analysis. And we have two examples. The one is the document classification, the movie rating, and the DSI is time series. Maybe I will go on time series because the, I think that no one is doing the text analysis for the final project. Maybe some of you did that, but may do that, but the, maybe time series is uh, more uh, simple, uh, more common data. And an example, so the stock market volume prediction. So stock market volume, that depends on the day, but it can be predictable somewhat. For example, the, during the financial crisis, the volume gets much larger. Or if the stock market is booming, the volume is larger. But the, sometimes the market is very quiet and the volume is low. Or in summer months, maybe some people take vacation and the volume is low. So it's somewhat predictable. So we want to predict the trading volume in New York Stock Exchange by the past trading volume and the past Dow Jones return and the past log of volatility. Volatility is the expected the size of price movement in the future. And the daily data for those three variables are available for um, maybe these 25 years. So data at a glance. So this is the trading volume and Dow Jones return and the volatility. So return goes positive and negative um, and it uh, flips very quickly. So like the, this looks the high frequency noise and the vo trading volume changes uh, more you know, slowly. So the, it looks, you know, some, you know, dependence, time dependence. So for example, maybe, mm, yeah, maybe around here volume is slightly higher or around here volume is lower for a few months and so on. Volatility even have maybe higher um, correlation. So around here always volume volatility is higher or around here maybe for a few years volatility is higher. You can see this is 1974. So during the first oil shock. So that is probably why the volatility is higher. And between two oil shocks, the volatility is, volatility is relatively lower. Yeah, so before doing recurrent neural network, that we think about the basic time series model. If we want to predict the V sub T, that is the volume at time t. This can be explained by the past volume. So linear combination of the volume of past L days. If L is five, past five days. And then also the um, past five days stock market return. 
linear combination of past five days stock market return and also the past five days volatility. Yeah, especially the um, time dependent data such as volatility, Z1, Z, Z sub T minus one to T minus L, these are highly correlated. So usually they interpret, it's good to interpret as interpret the summation of these coefficient beta 3 1 to beta 3 L if we take the summation then usually the parameter is more stable so basically we have multi collinearity between z sub t minus 1 and z sub t minus 2 and so on yeah here L is the number you have to pick you can try with L is equal to 1 uh, but if you think the more than uh, two variables are useful, maybe you can go L is equal to two, three, and so on. In this case, maybe L is five is reasonable because the one week have five business days and the different day of the week have different effects. So probably five or six um, works good. If we have monthly pattern, probably you can go with like 13 um, because the one month before, so the, for example, the, this uh, month, the CPI, consumer price index, that is affected by the previous months, months is the uh, CPI increase, but also it has seasonality. So it's useful to see one year ago. So that means that also one year, one month ago, that may be useful. So the, if time series, month three time series, maybe you know, 12, 13, those are the um, ones you can try. Uh, sometimes you can skip in the middle. Maybe we take the lag one, lag two, and lag 12, lag 13, and lag 14, or something like that. Um, but uh, this is a basic model. Okay, so from this, the, we can see that the, basically the predictors are these. Predictors are V sub T minus one, V sub T minus L, and R sub T minus one up to Z sub T minus L. These are predictors, and this V sub T is a response. So we can align the, that way. So basically uh, like this. So Y is the response, M is predictor, and the predictor is includes the, um, basically the lag of these variables. Actually, the, this the simplifies the situation and it also should, it should also include the R sub L or the Z sub L and so on. But the, this is the way to go. So the each line represents one observation and the, this is the predictor variable and this is response variable. So it, it has a lot of you know, duplications. So this V sub L appears here and appears here and appears here and so on. But the, this is the way to fit the time series data. So basically the, we can put M as the, each line of M as the predictor and the Y as response, then we can fit the recurrent neural network. So, so I didn't, I couldn't write the, today, but the, that is the way the how neural network the, defines predictors and response. Yeah, and the the model, basic model I wrote, the that is called auto regressive model with degree five. That has sixteen parameters. We have, yeah, you can see 16 parameters, intercept and five lags of three variables. And the neural network, we have K is equal to 12. So that means that we extract features and summarize it into 12 dimensional vectors. So how many parameters? Um, we have 13 parameters between Y value and the 12 nodes. Y value is the linear combination of 12 nodes plus intercept, so 13. And the, what's the relationship between X and the each hidden node? That is 12 times one plus three plus 12, because 12 nodes, so 12 times 12 equations, and each equation have one plus three plus 12 parameters. Uh, 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 uh. Why? We have intercept is one and Sorry, why three plus 12? I think this is just 15, right? So we have, you know, lag variable. So the, the, we have the five lags of 
the volume and the five lags of return and five um, lags of uh, volatility, so 15. So we have in total 205 parameters. So it's more complicated. And R square is actually slightly worse <laughs> than AR5. Uh, maybe I flipped, maybe the other way around, but anyway, it's similar. So that's probably not good. But the performance improve if the day of week effect are included, but that's also true for AR model. So it's not clear uh, why um, performance doesn't improve with neural network, but the, uh, sometimes it's better than the traditional time series analysis. Yep. So that's it for today. And uh, we skipped 10.5.1 and the uh, probably I will give very simple the quizzes for today because the, uh, some of you have presentation next Tuesday, so you don't have much time. So probably just conceptual questions. Yeah, so this is the last lecture and the next time the, um, the presentations. So presentations that you have, uh, I think 12 minutes, 30 minutes, what I did, did, you, did I say? Um, so presentation, there should be the 12 to 30 minutes. So uh, just the time of your presentation, at least maybe twice, um, then uh, you can make a presentation on time. So this is not video presentation and real time presentation. So if you exceed time, I will stop then um, go to the next presentation. So just make sure that the, um, you can finish within time. Okay, so that's it for today. Do you have any questions? Okay, so thank you for the listening for the to the lecture and the uh, I hope um, to have wonderful presentations in the next week and the week after that. Okay, so have a good night. Thank you. You, thank you. Have a good night. Thank you. Bye. Thanks, Professor. Take care. Thank you, Professor. Have a good night. Oh, you too.